So news, breaking news actually, breaking news from the world of podcasting that might um that might bring you a few lulls if you've been paying attention to what's been going on. Joe Rogan has just announced that young Jamie has unfortunately contracted the COVID. Right, he has been he has tested positive for COVID nineteen. Now, of course, if you've been paying attention, you know Joe Rogan's had a bit of an up and down relationship with the whole COVID. Right, he's essentially led him to you know seek pastors news in Texas, um, his home state of California have essentially uh, locked down the entire state because they fear the Rona. They don't want anyone to get it. They obviously have a different sort of approach to it um, as opposed to other states in America. And um, Joe Rogan's comedy circuit has been industry essentially has been um, negatively affected by some of the decisions you know going on there and california decided to kind of up sticks uh, once and for and decided to move to texas in order to live in a place where he can be a bit more free to do the things that he enjoys to do and he's had a bit of an up and down relationship in terms of his outlook right i remember in the beginning um he got some dude on um a virologist i'm gonna say maybe a yeah maybe an infectious disease expert who was really laying the laying down the the facts of the matter uh, kind of giving his impression this was early on this must have been about march and he basically said much of what we've kind of seen happen right he gave us a prognosis that it's going to be really bad it's going to get really worse before it gets better we're going to probably be out for the entire year no vaccine until the new year everything that we kind of know he was kind of laying it out and joe was sort of agreeing with it then i guess then i think the michael yo thing happened right a fellow comedian contracted COVID, one of the first ones. Um, you know, um, he was a young, fit kind of dude who got COVID and it kind of shook up the comedy world, shook up most people because it was like, oh, wow, if he got it, right, and he looks like a pretty um, in-shape dude, imagine everyone else. And then somehow, I guess, because Michael Yo came on the show and described his and described what kind of led to the situation, it automatically, when I, when I, when I, when I remember watching Michael Yo and Joe Rogan, I immediately knew Joe was going to start going, you know, a little bit conspiratorial on the whole COVID thing and maybe having his doubts and, you know, investigate a little bit more because Michael Yo was basically saying that he was run down. He was touring a lot. I think he might have said he was moving home or something. Loads of stuff was happening in his personal life um, that was basically making him run down. He had a bit of a fever in the first place, which kind of made him susceptible maybe for catching COVID. Who knows? I'm not an expert. But that sort of planted the seed in Joe Rogan's head. And ever since then, he's been on a COVID denial sort of like dance, right? He just kind of says a few stuff, kind of chuckles and laughs about it, then takes it back, then chuckles and takes it back. But then most recently in the Tom Papa episode, he sort of doubled down on his stance that he thinks, you know, essentially um, the virus isn't that big of a deal. He kind of uh, raises the point that Trump got it and he was perfectly fine. He's a fat dude who doesn't really eat healthily which is kind of a decent point to make don't get me wrong but again false equivalency right because you know donald trump is a leader of the free world he's probably going to get round the clock you know expert 24 hour um support that's going to essentially ensure that he that there's no way chance in hell they're, they're going to allow him to die of a virus that he's been berating um you know on the pulpit for the best part of what yeah a year or so right or since the but the virus basically was declared or since the pandemic was declared they weren't gonna allow that to happen no way shape or form so he has obviously been denying it for a while and then of course in the comedy circle crew you've got the joe Rook, you've got the brendan shaws and brian callan they were probably the first victims of it they dealt with it in a really poor way and then recently we've got um stories of who was andrew santino contracted and maybe a few other people who have kind of kept it themselves and didn't really want to say anything about it which makes sense i guess because you don't want people to like I don't, again man i don't want to say it makes it doesn't make sense does it if you don't tell people why you got covid but hey comedians are weird anyway now jamie's got covid and joe rogan announced this on his instagram and we're gonna play the clip now and hear what he has to say about it boop, boop, boop. hello friends so we have a situation young jamie vernon tested positive today for covid19 i tested negative the rest of the staff tested negative uh, but Jamie tested positive. He thought maybe he had a sinus infection or allergies, but he has COVID. Uh, we were off last week. And again, how much better is this announcement of, you know, than what Brendan Shaw did? How much better is this than what Callan did? And, you know, the it wasn't even arrogance i don't know what it was maybe it was arrogance right because i think to give a bit of context when brendan shaw and brian callan got covid 
this was kind of like that was like the crescendo to their whole like you know covid denial right um podcast that they were on every episode was brian complaining about covid and his shows getting cancelled because effectively that's what happened right they got their knickers and twists because they weren't able to perform shows they weren't able to go on tour earn money see their friends and you know like it or lump it um that's a big part of their lifestyle right that's a big part of what kind of gets them out of bed in the morning the ability to kind of like write jokes right quote unquote whilst they're on the show and then perform those jokes at the comedy store when they go on tour uh when they're filming a special bloody blah 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 so to have that completely cut off which kind of you know is their main way to kind of socialize with their peers it's a big deal so i understood them you know being a little bit annoyed by the fact but the fact that they took that annoyance to then you know questioning the severity of it questioning um state um response to it where no one really had any information again now probably they probably have more of a reason to be angry at the response now because we have you know what most places have seven months of information and they're still in some kind of lockdown it's like come on let's let's just look at the findings and make some adequate ways that we can kind of all get back to work and do what we love whilst you know still looking after the vulnerable but back then when we had no information to get up and say confidently that you're doing it the wrong way because you just want to get back on stage you know it kind of came across weird so this apology already is 100 times better than Shorben again maybe Shorben Callum were the sacrificial lambs right because Andrew Santino's apology the other day was pretty decent too so maybe they've learned from the backlash that those guys get those guys got and how badly they handled it in terms of being careless in the first place from contracting it Brendan Shorben is still denying that he passed it on to Shin and other some other people even though he was the super spreader in that respect um maybe this is kind of the lesson they've sort of learned from it let's continue and, and hear Joe's explanation the episodes that aired we had previously recorded so I hadn't seen Jamie in about nine days and he said somewhere around Thursday this past Thursday he felt like shit for a day and then started feeling better on Friday and by Saturday he was mostly over it today he says he feels 90 percent ish but it's COVID, so and that's what we, and that's the weird thing about this thing and it? it seems to respond it seems to have different um responses to different people in it like there's no one uniform way of experiencing COVID. there's some stories you hear of like who is that recently there's a story of like a fitness influencer that passed away a russian dude or something right now again did he have pre-existing conditions we don't know was he taking rays i don't know how that affects you blah 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 we don't know he could he could have been doing blow every night we have no um context to it but it's just odd that some people get it and it's just like a cold some people get it and they don't even know they had it some people get it and they're bedridden right some people get it they lose flipping who's the who's that broadway actor that lost like limbs and then he unfortunately passed away like he like horrible 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 ways people are going out um which is which is what i'm interested to see once we kind of get over this hump and we sort of come out of this the other side it'll be great if they can kind of find out something and prepare i don't know just educate the public in terms of like why this is happening that way why it's affecting people in different ways especially the ones who are let's say on paper um don't have any preconditions conditions and are quite healthy why that seems to happen because you know we all can kind of use our common sense as to why it would affect somebody negatively if you're obese a respiratory you know virus it makes complete sense but if you're fairly fit and you do all the right things and it still gets you why does that happen exactly like, and why does one person just have a cold and get over it quite quickly and why does one person never get back their sense of smell or taste we cancelled all the shows we're happy he has a mild case but we cancelled all the shows uh, I'm keeping away from everybody and testing hmm. myself and testing the staff every Good. day until uh, we're in the clear. There's nothing we can do. So we're canceling all podcasts this week and I won't know when we will do them again until we get a, a clear from the doctor. I think it has to be, I think it's 10 days and three negative test results in a row. So, uh, that takes us deep into next week. I don't know what we're going to do. We may do some shows remotely. We may do some shows with a substitute producer, which I really don't want to do, but we'll figure it out. Um, 
And again, how much better is this explanation than what happened to children? Again, is this because of uh, their deal with Spotify? Do they have to sort of be a bit more upfront about this? I don't think so, because Joe's really quite, you know, um, honest and straightforward when it comes to these sort of things. I'm sure he would have done this even if he was filming this in his basement. But again, far better way to explain it. Just put it all out there. And again, this is coming from somebody who was, you know, getting on his COVID denial hype train a little bit you know, being a little bit of a grumpy sod. And again, I understand it because, you know, his career has essentially been decimated, you know. My interest in terms of dance music and nightclub culture has essentially been, you know, decimated too. So anybody in performing in the in the arts, especially in nightlife, is, you know, can feel his pain. But it's cool that he's humble enough to kind of fess up to it on camera and be like, hey, we fucked up. Or not even we fucked up because it sounds like Jamie contracted it off in his, in the, on his own way. But still, the fact that he's been able to kind of fess up about it and just, you know, front it as best as possible is the best way to do it. Um, and I'm, I'm happy that Jamie has a mild case. I'm happy that he's feeling better. But uh, obviously, this is a, a fucked up situation. My apologies to all the guests. My apologies to all of you. Um, it's out of my hands, obviously. And I will keep you posted. There you go. The Joe Rogan podcast is going to go on a hiatus for a week. So, or maybe, or maybe more in it, depending on um, the negative tests that are coming up. So, again, interesting news there. And it? it's a never ending, um, never ending circus when it comes to all those comedy, comedy store guys, isn't it? But let me know in the comments. What do you think? Do you think, um, this is natural karma for Joe's COVID denial. Do you think it's just an unfortunate circumstance? And um, does this change your view on the virus if you were a bit of a COVID denier? Because I assume, I don't know why, I just get the feeling that a Jamie would be, even if Rogan is the one that's being a bit, you know, skeptical about it, I'll assume Jamie will be the one that kind of, you know, is a bit more of a believer in the issue. So maybe he was taking the right precautions. Who knows? Maybe he wasn't. Maybe he was playing flipping you know, um, skins v skins, basket, pick up basketball in some court somewhere in the middle of Texas. I don't know. But yeah, hopefully that guy gets well soon in it because the, that show isn't, you know, it's not the same without young Jamie behind the board. So may hopefully he recovers.